Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 48. The title of the discourse is The Mendicants of Kosambi. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. This discourse is basically about uh, some mendicants in Kosambi who were arguing, quarreling and disputing and they were wounding each other with barbed words. They couldn't persuade each other or be persuaded nor could they convince each other or be convinced. So then what happened was that a mendicant went up to the Buddha and told uh, the Buddha that this is happening. So Buddha summoned those mendicants to him to, to him, and uh, then basically Buddha says that you have been arguing and quarreling and disputing and uh, all these things you are doing. So they, are, they said, yes, sir, we are doing that. So Buddha said that... Uh, what do you think, mendicants, when you are arguing, quarreling and disputing, continually continually wounding each other with bad words, are you treating your spiritual companions with kindness by way of body, speech and mind, both in public and private? So they said, no, sir. So it seems that when you are arguing, you are not treating each other with kindness. And this will be for your lasting harm and suffering. So then Buddha said to the mendicants that there are Six warm-hearted qualities that make for fondness and respect, conducting, conducing to inclusion, harmony and unity without quarreling. Now, what are these six qualities? The first quality that uh, Buddha says that mendicants consistently treat their spiritual companions with bodily kindness. Now, these all things that are there mentioned in this sutta is mostly intended for the mendicants who go from the lay life to homelessness in search of enlightenment but here this we can apply to our uh, our spiritual life as well our sangha as well if we are part of the sangha or even our family life as well that how we should treat our family family members right we are all family members we are all in in kind of a spiritual journey itself what all the family members we are we have been connected in our various lives and we help each other learn the various lessons in family life, also we are learning the various lessons. So we are in fact deeply spiritual companions only. So we can also consider all these things from that uh, family perspective. So Buddha says the first uh, thing that treating the spiritual companions with bodily kindness, both in public and private, right? Bodily kindness, no actions, which no no violence, no you know violence in any form through the body, right? That should not be done. Second is verbal kindness. In, in, in speech, there should be kindness, restraint in speech. Third is mental kindness, kindness in thoughts uh, about the family member, about the sangha or the, uh, the other mendicants. Right? Fourth is mendicant shares without reservation any material possessions they have gained by legitimate means, even the food placed in the alms bowl, using them in common with their ethical spiritual companions. That means... Uh, whatever has been received as alms food, so they share it with the other uh, uh, friends. So sometimes what happens is that if suppose five people have, five mendicants went for the alms, like three received the food and the other two did not receive the food. So the three who received the food, they do not eat the food completely. At the end of the alms round, when they come back to their huts, they share the food, right, with the entire food that has been received is shared amongst the five. This is how they should live. Fifth, mendicant lives according to the precepts shared with their spiritual companions, both in public and in private. These precepts are unbroken, impeccable, spotless and unmarred, liberating, praised by sensible people, not mistaken and leading to immersion. Now when you talk about precepts, now the mendicants have another set of precepts. Actually, they have a complete monastic code, a separate code for the uh, the the uh, mendicants, the monks and the nuns, uh, and that is in the coded in the Vinaya. It is known as Vinaya, Vinaya Patika. So that is like a very elaborate kind of rules that are there for the bhikkhus, and uh, uh, there is a book also bhikkhus guide to rules uh, by bhikkhu Bodhi or I think some other bhikkhu. Uh, bhikkhus guides for lay people. That is the name of the book. Where you know very well it has been explained the Venya rules, right? So, 
so they live according to the precepts according to their rules they have many much more rules than compared to lay people like for lay people we have five precepts minimum five precepts that is no lying no no killing no lying no stealing no sexual misconduct and no drinking we have like the five minimum rules five precepts but for lay people it is like many much 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 more okay um, then sixth is um, a warm hearted quality is that the mendicant lives according to the view shared with their spiritual companions both in public and in private that view is noble and emancipating and leads one who practices it to the complete end of suffering so these are the six warm hearted qualities that buddha said that the mendicants must cultivate in themselves so that they can live harmoniously all right then there are basically some seven knowledges that buddha has uh, said buddha says that how does the view that is noble and emancipating lead one with who practices it to the complete end of suffering it's when the mendicant has gone to the wilderness or the root of a tree or to the empty hut and reflects is there anything that i'm overcome with internally and haven't given up because of which i might not accurate so this is basically all the self reflection so the mendicants have to keep reflecting that what i have not given up right so if the mendicant is overcome with sensual desire it's their mind that's overcome he realizes that it's my mind that has overcome with sensual desire similarly for ill will dullness drowsiness restless remorse doubt pursuing speculation about the world pursuing speculation about the next world right all these things the mendicant reflects and realizes that i am overcome my mind is overcome they understand there is nothing that i am overcome with internally and haven't given up because of which i might not accurately know and see my mind is properly disposed for a weakness so once the pers- the mendicant realizes that i my mind was overcome he clears his mind and then his mind becomes properly disposed for awakening to the truths this is the first knowledge they have achieved that is noble and transcendent then noble disciple reflects when i develop cultivate and make much more of this view do i personally gain serenity and quenching they understand when i develop cultivate and make much of this view i personally gain serenity and quenching this is the second knowledge then third is where buddha says where noble disciple reflects are there are there other ascetics or brahmins outside of the buddhist community who have had the same kind of view that i have they understand that no there are no such ascetics who have the same kind of view this is the third knowledge then noble disciple reflects do i have the same nature as a person accomplished in view and what is a person accomplished in view that means if that that the meaning of this is that if they have fallen into any kind of offense for which rehabilitation has been laid down they quickly disclose clarify and reveal it to the teacher or a sensible spiritual companion so it is a practice in the vinaya it is laid down the, in the code of conduct that there are certain offenses which are like uh, which results in immediate expulsion expulsion there are some which are condonable if you uh, kind of reveal it to the teacher you know those kind of categories are there so they know that if there is an offense that is made and it is basically they immediately know that they have made the offense they go and clarify to the teacher so that they know about that then uh, though they may ma- manage a diverse spectrum of duties for their spiritual companions they still feel a keen regard to the training in higher ethics higher mind and higher wisdom so buddha gives us an example of a cow with a baby calf now if the, even if the baby cow is grazing she keeps the calf close by right as she grazes in the same way this is the nature of a person accomplished in view though they might manage a diverse spectrum of duties they still feel a keen regard for tr- training in higher ethics higher mind then do i have the same strength as a person accomplished in view so so basically they say they apply and uh, and with attention to the not training proclaimed by the realized one concentrate wholeheartedly and actively listen they understand i have the same strength as a person accomplished in view and then when the teaching and training proclaimed by the realized one are being taught they find inspiration in the meaning of the teaching and find the joy connected with the teaching that is the seventh knowledge so buddha says that when the noble disciple has these seven factors they have properly investigated their own nature with respect to the realization of the fruit of stream entry a noble disciple with these seven factors has the 
fruit of stream entry. That kind of a noble disciple gets the fruit of stream entry. What is stream entry? It's the first stage of awakening. After that stage, there are only seven more births maximum and you, you will never go down into the lower or the hell realms, right? And once you attain the fruit of stream entry. So as a mendicant, if he has these seven knowledges, then he realizes the fruit of stream entry, right? So this is the, uh, this particular discourse, middle discourse 48, the mendicants of Kosambi. Please do uh, think, uh, reflect on this discourse and whatever your insights uh, are, do share in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this, uh, this uh, the, my video. Thank you so much. Amo